complications all the time. Complications in your footsteps, baby. Complications in your My honor, Steve. How are you? Uh, I'm great. How are you? Good. Going for the blue shirt today, Bob? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. You're a little bright, huh? No, it's not. Nice. Yeah. Turquoise, we call it. <laughs> turquoise. I love turquoise, you know? You got Midwestern it. Midwestern like you, right? Here we are. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, up here at Havana's in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah. And when I talked to you last, the other day, you were in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, and I was in Woodstock yesterday. We're making a few um, promotional clips for a record we've been making since September or October with uh, the band I play with a few times each year. Okay. They're all from Cape Cod, but um, we've been recording with John Simon is producing this one uh, in Woodstock. And he did Jackrabbit. He did Jackrabbit. So this is sort of, in a way, Jackrabbit reunion, and it's it's really been better because well, John and I have mellowed a bit, and we're really we're really seeing eye to eye basically on everything, and it's um, Beautiful. it's been fun. How many years has it been since Jack Rabbit? This mm. is what anniversary uh, coming up on, right? Yeah, Bigger. this is probably thirty-five. Okay, sorry, sorry to bring that up. <laughs> well, you know that's the that's what it is is the truth. So I don't know where it all went, you know, but yeah, that's right. Yeah, now you're from Meridian. Mississippi. Mississippi. And how was that growing up musically? When did you start? Well, I started really with the, the birds, mm -hmm. like a lot of people. And the Beatles were, of course, magnetic, but the birds just really sealed the deal for me. Something about that Mr. Tambourine Man record they came out with. And, and that's when I realized I needed it. Uh, really learn how to play the guitar instead of just imagining and and, um, and start singing away. And it must have been something to do with the folk element of it. I was right at that young age to where that was a folk rock hit. So you moved out of Meridian to New York? Mm -hmm. And what possessed you to do that, to just give it up and, and move out to a foreign city? Well, it was kind of a make it or break it. I've been playing in bands for years. <clears throat> We'd made up Clay Barnes, my friend and I had made a record and pitched it in California uh, to no avail. So it was sort of like, well, you've got to go where things are happening. And where was that? At that time, it was, it was New York City. And some of it coming from CBGBs and the rest of it still coming from the village, you know, uh, folk scene. So I went there. Uh, at 21 to to just give it all I had and see what would happen. I didn't figure, okay, I'll give it two years. I, I didn't have a time limit, but it wasn't gonna come to me in, in Meridian, Mississippi. You couldn't even play original songs anywhere in Mississippi, and much less really get any kind of real, you know, folk rock recording deal. Now, did you have a record deal at that time? How long did it take until Arrive on arrival. Well, it took about a year and a half um, to get a, a, a signed to one, and then we had to make it. So I guess it took about a little over two years till the October that the Alive on Arrival came out. Yeah. Now you also have a book out on uh, or a photo exhibit book. Am I correct with your uh, iPhone photos? Right, I've upgraded a little bit to a point and shoot. Um, <laughs> and I may get a nice little uh, easy to carry Sony camera later this month. Yeah. But I started out with, and I still carry this outdated cell phone because the, the way it frames up and the distance that it works with and, and the colors of it, I like. You, you have this unique voice when you sing and it draws it draws me in and it draws the audience in. And Thank you. It, did you just, I mean, I, it's just a natural thing. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say there was ever any uh, attempt to, to sound a certain way. All, all I know is when we started out for years we didn't have monitors on stage. So it made a 
probably made me a bit hoarse. Yeah. I, th I guess we were just singing off the house PA and whatever was bouncing well, off the back wall. Yeah, yeah. Everybody did that. Nobody had stage monitors. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you were playing in the opening, you had all this feel, just this beautiful. You, you took a G sharp minor chord and you, you just really bent that. And you were doing this. And, oh, and just it, now? It, yeah. Do you, uh, you, you play in that style mostly? Yeah. Well, because I play so much solo, so I have room to. In that case, you'd be wanting to make use of this open B string. I love it. I got lost in that. That is beautiful. Just... Thank you. And then if you, you know, that's E. So E just offers the, what it, you know, with so much open strings. And then so you switch keys, you're in a different world. There it is, damn it. <laughs> oh, maybe I pray. And I want to get what I want. Love mine and hold mine. Love mine and hold on me, but I won't pray. And I want to get what I want. Yeah, it's easier to write songs if you don't know the right chords. You stray into your own directions, and sometimes that's, you know, it's from the gives heart. you an idea. Yeah, well, it's from the heart. I mean, that's what, <laughs> that's what we're about, right? Now, how's the business of music treating you? I don't, I, you know, I'm going to put out this record. You know, my expectations are in line. I, I, you know, I mean, but you always have to keep a balance between for, for me, I mean, I'm 60 years old, so, That's you know. Young. That's in your 40. So, you know, do you think that, uh, you know, um, Teresa Brewer or Janice Martin or some girl from the 50s or, you know, how long did Carl Perkins think at that time that he certainly wouldn't have planned to be, you know, dinning the charts at age 60? So that's not a very reasonable expectation anyway. Some of that Paul Simon has made, had a really good run, mm -hmm. but that's rare, rare, very rare. And his timing was so good. I mean, he even did a tour once called Born at the Right Time. So he knows it. But, you know, and now the digital revolution has, has really, you know, it's done as much to music almost as what we were talking about the iPhone has done to photography, you know, professional photography. You could say that the iPhone has really enhanced, you know, the, the, the photography itself, of course. But so all of those things, I'm aware of them, but I've got this record. We've been working on it. It's, it's nearly done. It's going to be a really good one. And, and with the likes of Joey Spampanato and Kami Lyle and John Simon involved, it's, mm -hmm. it's been fun. And it, it, it you know, it, it makes me feel good to just be creating it. And the rest we'll just see. I, uh, I, I don't know. Some people that are really successful in music, like perhaps um, uh, Zach Brown or or um, uh, Fish, they would be successful at whatever they did. They, you know, if they, they, I think. I mean, they just have that kind of karma, if you will, or luck. Yeah. yeah. You know. But they also are comfortable with that. I, I like what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think they could do what you're doing, and that's go on the road by yourself. That's, well, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's something that Steve Forbert can, can do and not too many other people. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. How's Nashville down there in New York? It, I area? suppose it's good. I, 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 you know, I have about five friends there, and I, and mm -hmm. I seek them out. I don't go out much because I like to talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, maybe one or two people at a time so I can hear what they might have to say and then process it and remember it later. Um, 
that kind of quality interaction is what I look for or else I just be by myself, you know, so I don't like crowds. But I suppose Nashville's fine. I keep hearing more and more about it, but I'm there less and less. Spoke 
his own dear wife Never heard to speak so free Said I'd rather a kiss from dead Maddie's lips Than you or your finer happy isn't it it's as good as um it's as good as um i love you more today than yesterday or it's a happy song it's not <laughs> okay maddie yeah, groves it's, it's called yeah, thank you that's beautiful steve see my, ya my very honor thank, thank you, you.